So here I am on Nerf Modding World Records, uh, which is, of course, the place on Facebook where all the Nerf modding records are set as of right now. It was a good idea by JT Nerf to put this site up and really make a competition for the fastest blasters. And you may notice in one certain place, my name comes up a lot, a lot, a lot. Wow. Let's see. Fire Strike 205. Big Shock 169, Star Shot 286, and that's not going to get beaten anytime soon. And if I were to actually really try, I could probably get an FPS in the 295, 300 range if I tried. Um, Sharp Fire 200, Hot Shot 243, um, Triad 124, 124 by 1 feet per second, and Dual Strike 280. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is just great. I mean, wow. And if the Fire Strike category was broken up, the Fire Strike and Pink Crush, where the Fire Strike got 205 and the Pink Crush got 211, uh, that would be eight records. Eight of them. Okay, eight. What I have here is seven, which is really, really crazy. But this is really cool because everybody's just kind of doing what us guys do. <laughs> <laughs> we race dragsters. We uh, measure our blasters, how fast they go. It's really cool. Now, I think the dual strike is going to get beaten pretty soon. And let me explain why. Okay. Here is the brass dual strike magnum. As you guys know, last year this was under development. And uh, it started out with a uh, coupler system that allowed the use of the megas. And the whole reason I wanted the dual strike, the whole reason I ever modded the dual strike, Made the first ultra match dual strike ever. Okay, well, strike that. It's not really an ultra match. It works on a different principle. But the first ever Cartea pistol uh, dual strike, the first ever modded one that was modded to this ability, was because I wanted the megas as backup. In a lot of California wars, these are one hit kills. Okay, so if you had a you're playing a three hit uh, three fall game and you have one of these and they're doing like one ten to one thirty feet per second. You got a good chance of taking someone out first. Also, these are really good against shield bears and this and that. Unlike, you know, let's say a bird of prey, if this was singled, which a lot of mine are, you have one shot and then you have to go to your backup pistol. Okay. Well, because of this, you got the tube that goes here, down here, through this valve here into the plunge tube. A lot of dead space, a lot of places where you could leak. Mine doesn't leak, but that's by a lot of effort and work. But it still has a quite a bit of dead space. I would say probably as much as a long shot normally has. Okay. Um, but what um, happening lately is people are building more dual strikes. Um, and uh, two, two really good ones are OC Nerf and JT Nerf. JT Nerf built one where he uh, cut this over here, put this over as so, and he's got a coupler right here. Now... I think once he gets his barrel tuned up and 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 his O-ring tuned up and everything tuned up to w where it should be, just like he did with the um, with his pink crush, I think he's gonna he's gonna beat this. He's using the same spring I am, which is a 16 NT. Okay, and I think he's gonna beat this. But of course, the, with a pistol like that, you don't have the use of the megas. And believe me, it. it this is the fastest a Mega Blaster spring powered can ever get is out of a, a brass dual strike magnum. This is as fast as you're ever going to get one. Other than maybe putting a Mega Adapter on a Snap Pull or a, or a Plus Bow. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. But people have tried to throw even like high pressure air into firing Megas and they've only gotten like 143 feet per second. So me getting 134 feet per second out of these, okay is pretty damn good considering the restrictions of the ammo. Um, OC Nerf is doing something cool. He's doing something I originally thought of doing, but I didn't do it because I wanted the exchangeability of the barrel system. And as you can see, with the, with, with the LT having a turret, and at the time I had a turret, I had hopes of maybe putting a turret on here or, or a three-shot rig or a three-shot AR system on here. Well... I ended up liking it as singled, and between the Megas and this, pretty powerful. Especially when you cut down the Megas. Especially when you cut down the Megas to slugs. Oh, you shorten the peg in here, or take it out entirely. I shortened it. And you have these as slugs. Man, 
they really do really well with the Busby Air Max XLs. Really. And they hit with just a thud like you would not believe. But what he's doing is it looks like he's making a sliding uh, barrel system. Okay. That goes into your top um, top ball valve right here and into, into here. This is really cool. And I originally thought of doing this. I was going to cut this top part off right here and just have a bolt on the top. But then I found that, okay, and then I would have to make a pipe that right angles, feels like that. And, I, and we all know from a big shock that putting angles uh, deeper than 65 degrees or 60 degrees, I would say, on a firing mechanism is bad. It causes the air to have to sh move one direction momentum and another direction momentum, and it does slow it down. As much as people say, well, pressure is pressure, eh, air movement is air movement. It's just like any other object moving. It has inertia. Even air has inertia. Is as light as it is, it still has a mass. Even though people put their hands in the air, oh, oh well, it's, it weighs nothing. No, it does. It has a weight, folks. It does. Um, you're far better having somewhat of a linear path. And even though this still goes at like 45 degrees, that's still, um, it's still really powerful. Of course, your best is, of course, inline, okay? But his is more inline. Like, he made it straight. Where this one's got a kind of a, like this, his is more in line, and he's got the sliding breech, but he put it way down here, actually really good idea to put it here, um, put it here, and then drill this out with a 9 16 and then put your coupler going through there, and it, it, the other thing was, is that I was playing a lot with the Nick, and of course, I love Nick ingenuity a lot, and I love to adapt it in my own way, as I have my own style of modding, um, that's a bit derived from the Nick and but also from Singapore modding as well. Hence why I live in Singapore, okay? Um and basically um I like the idea of couplers. But I always didn't like PVC because it can move around, it can break, it can crack. I made one with like five layers of fiber tape that would never break, kinda like this is, but it had fiber tape on it. And I use more of a brass coupler. And if you use precise brass you can do that, and it will work just fine. It will keep an airtight seal when you fire everything. Okay? So, um, he has it so it's more of a pull, load the stuff in, and push in. That's what it looks like to me. That's actually a really good idea. But I had an even better idea. Um, what I was originally going to do was I was going to put a cam on the inside of this. But then I found that hollowing this out would be a bad idea. And if I had a notch sticking out, it would get in the way of my catch system. Bummer. Unless, of course, I put it where the catch spring ends, I'd have to make it really close. But here's so basically what I would have is a release cam here. The release cam here would pull on a cam going this way through the blaster and would release this that was spring loaded and open it like so. So then you'd have a breech open on like either the top or this side, and then you would throw a dart in there. And then you would close this shut with the spring, and it would lock up again with this back, and then it would fire. Well, let's see. I had I had um I had figured out a way of doing it so when it fires, it doesn't open the breach. Okay, but the problem was it, that's just a lot of work, and I didn't really know how much better that would be. But you might see it in future products that I might do where I actually have a breach that opens when you prime it, and then. Uh, locks closed with a spring-loaded cam. Eh, it's possible. It's possible. You might see that in future products. So, in any who, um, yeah, this has got a good chance of getting beat. Um, I don't mind because I rather have the usability of the two. I rather have the I rather have the the coupler load of the barrels because then replacing the barrel or modifying the barrel, fine-tuning the barrel is a snap. It's not really a part of the blaster. So you can do, you have a lot more flexibility. As a matter of fact, this thing fired a 20-inch barrel once. It was like this long. I'm sure you guys have seen pictures if you follow me a lot. It's like that long. And it did about, it was more stable, but it did about 220 feet per second. The problem was, is that the barrel did this a lot. The more stable, the most stable barrel I have here is the aluminum-lined one where it's, where it's got the 9 16th interior diameter with the uh, 1732 brass, and it's using the ultra match concept, where the last 1.8 inches, I'm sorry, one, one and one eighth inches, is countersunk, so the air goes around the dart after it fires, the very last of your air, and centers the dart. Um, basically, there's an exit sign at the end of my office, maybe you guys have seen it, it's, it's commonly a target, 
And I have hit it consistently with the same. Boom, boom, boom. It's very, very smooth. When I fire, um, I can fire this with a Merlin, too. It's got enough air to do it. And when I fire it um, with streamlines, it's just flying, which is no, I mean, just, just no unstableness whatsoever. No fishtailing, no nothing. It's very nice. Um, it's really cool to see people um, finally using my designs, especially like JT Nerf. I, I really thank you. Now, I wanted to, to bring this up. This is a bird of prey. And although pound for pound, it's not as powerful as a dual strike, um, it can take more yell than a dual strike because a dual strike doesn't have the geometry that this one does. This one's got geometry. And oh, yes. And by the way, this piece and this piece are two different pieces. And this piece goes all the way up here. So you have two layers of plastic right here that are art-shaped. And everybody knows from Roman times, clothes art shape. Uh-huh. Geometry. This blaster can do 40 kilograms. No problem. What you do with these is you take the, the, the trigger and you notch it deeper. Also, this one, too. Remember on a dual strike that your trigger, uh, your rod catch is going to be rounded. They rounded it for some reason. So you have to flatten it. But you also have to deepen it. This thing takes a number 10 screw going straight into, into here. And this design, as of August 14th, will be three years old. Three years old. That's incredible. The actual Bird of Prey design, the original one without the, the long shot plunger tube, is going to be four. Actually, is already, is already four years old. Uh, it will be four years old in December. That's right. So, um, this thing is a beast. Mainly the turret. Now, on AT2K, for example, seven pumps, it's going to be about 10 feet, feet per second faster. Yes, but that's seven pumps. Okay, this is one prime. And it's doing 250, 260. If you give it two springs, one prime is 280, 290. And you have the power to prime it and load, and prime it, and load, and prime it, and load. Um, so, it might, and, and it's smaller than a 2K. You don't have the big fake tank in the back and all this stuff. Um, 2K is my favorite air gun, by the way. AT2K is like my favorite, favorite air gun. I even own a couple 2Ks. I just didn't bring them to Singapore because they're illegal. Um, and they fit this very turret and this very turret adapter. That one also has a turret adapter, except this bottom lug is actually up here on, the, on it. So it fires at the bottom barrel instead of the top. But... A bird of prey, it's smaller, it's one prime, it's spring-powered, um, it, it, and it's reliable. It's very reliable. But one thing I like to do with this gun very much, blaster, sorry, is I like to take this one mark barrel, make that one dart. And then these other three, I put three in. If anybody remembers the messenger from hell where it had a three by three mode where each barrel had three darts and you could use it as a shotgun. This thing is designed to shotgun this, this turret. It wasn't designed to plink off four um, evenly. It was made for one to be really precise and the other three to shotgun. And that's what this is. Could you do four singles? Yes, you could. Could you fire four streamlines? Yes, you could. But it's far more effective with three Stefans, three Stefans, three Stefans, and one Stefan. Because what you do is you fire this one Stefan, you turn it, you load it, you pull it back, you fire again. It's less time than even pulling the barrel, loading it, and then putting it back in. Which this one's also coupled like that one. It's just a shorter barrel because you have a shorter plunger tube volume. And it does outstandingly great. Um... And there was a couple people working on Bird of Prey's. And for the longest time, there was nobody working on Bird of Prey. And now, finally, I see people working on them. Uh, some people are wanting to get rid of this wing and just using it as a holster weapon. I'm thinking, actually, of making a 3D printed piece that goes on here for my single barrel and then making it holster, making it look something like a dirty hairy butt. Well, the next tab L is going to be built. We'll see. Uh, probably sometime... In the fall, maybe winter, I'm going to make one. Um, so let's see. But I'm just really happy to see people building these. Um, I want to thank everybody for you know using my designs and taking them further. And finally, me not being the only one using them. I mean, I never really cared back in the day that nobody was really building them because they, had, they felt they had better ideas. That's fine. Um, but I'm really glad that people are finally 
doing something with my designs and finally building them. Uh, JT Nerf, uh, Daniel Murray, all these other people, you know, that have really worked with it. Frank and Zilla, um, 